So, hi, and welcome to our talk. We are Jörg and Clemens from the Core Components team, and we will show you our idea how to migrate from Wicket to Network Manager in an um, yeah, automated assistant way. So, uh, let's just start um, go direct into it. We see here uh, two simple configuration of a bonding interface, one with Wicket and the other one with Network Manager. They, of course, look different. One is writing the file, the other one uh, using the nmcli command. But for some extent, they are uh, somehow equal. And basically, this is what we want to achieve. And as we think it's pretty doable for small amounts, it uh, might be boring for if you do it over and over again for large installations. It could even be quite complex if you consider the um, amount of network, network configuration possibilities. And why we are doing it, uh, we already heard it in other talks. Wicked will not be um, part of Linux Framework 1. And with this, um, we think uh, a migration tool would be possible, uh, helpful to not stop customers or even us um, from um, migrating to Slash 16. Um, yeah, during our journey, well, how we will do it, we uh, considered several options. Of course, one was our, um, using Yast. It has the positive thing that it already, already is our main configuration tool. It supports uh, various uh, network configurations, but um, as, yes, as far as we know, not, not, will not be part of Slash 16 and even has a quite big footprint. We didn't like that idea. Next would be um, just do some kind of export with Wicked. So we write maybe in network manager um, configuration files directly from Wicked. Um, the cool thing would be we get the full um, configuration parsing for free and just need to uh, convert the internal format. But yeah, it would be some kind to do a relationship between Wicked and network manager, which I think it's not a good idea. And even the part of netconfig, which will also be not part of um, framework one, will not be covered as it's not part of the Wicked configuration. So then we come, uh, come across Agama, which is um, from our point of view currently the, the, the installer for Slash 16. And it has the benefit that it's already written to write, uh, to configure Network Manager. Um, we think it has a very good structure using a modern language named, namely Rust. And with this was a good opportunity for me, at least, to learn Rust. Um, and we just needed to think how we want to get our data into Agama and then configure Network Manager. And we did not want to rely on the FCFG files as they look, or they are not quite, um, how to say it, uh, not well uh, structured, not structured is not the right word. Um, the, the values are not really good, um, reliable as they, you, for instance, they are variables with, with different values, but still same meaning. So we come back to the XML format of Wicked, which can be easily created with Wicked client. And, um, which and is this give us also the possibilities to have a good tracking of what functionalities from Wicked we cover in our migration. Of course, there's the thing with, uh, regarding netconfig, and we still have to read this configuration somehow again. Um, the benefits here, again, is um, that all our implementations, which we will make on Gamma, we will at least a half of the implementation will benefit uh, to Agama as well. Um, the downside is we need a little bit more work and even we have to somehow a running network manager instance as Agama is talking to the Dbus interface of network manager. Um, and with, to mitigate this problem, actually we thought in the first at once we will provide everything needed in a container, which is now in, explained more in detail by Jorik. Thank you, Clemens. So um, this whole illustration you can basically imagine is what's going on inside the container. So we start off at the bottom left 
with the EFCFG um, config files, which will be mounted from the host to the container. Then we just run um, the wicket show config command, which um, makes the wicket client um, read the EFCFG files, does its own logic, validation, etc., and then outputs the wicket um, state in XML form. And um, yeah, then we also have the um, net config file. Um, as previously said, this isn't part of um, Wicket, so um, it will also need to be mounted um, from the host. And um, yeah, these two files then are um, read by the migration into our own migration model. And um, from that point on, we can convert it to a gamma. And in this conversion step, we can also do um, some validation um, and warn users or um, error or abort the migration if something is not supported, for example. Um, and yeah, with that we come to a gamma. So this isn't an in-depth talk about a gamma, but I quickly wanted to mention normally the way you would interface with a gamma, at least from the outside, would be via the a gamma settings. Um, but if we were to go down that route, we would actually have to have um, a gamma installed and all of its dependencies. And um, the Agama service would also need to be running, so it would complicate things um, a lot. But because we um, can interface with Agama as, as a library, um, we can actually skip this part and go directly to the internal model, uh, internal network model. And from that point on, uh, basically, Agama does everything for us. So um, it talks to Network Manager via Dbus. And in this step, we then um, add all our connections that we generated uh, in Network Manager. Now, one thing to note here is currently we always just add connections. That's why we actually um, only really support the container currently, because if we were to run it on a live system, um, there would probably already be connections, so these um, would need to be modified. But this isn't a technical limitation. Agama can do this perfectly fine. It's just, um, yeah, it's easier. Um, so um, at first, because it's um, still very much a work in progress, we um, went down the, that route. And then the last step is just network manager writes NM connection files for um, all these connections. And we can then um, extract this out of the container. So Wicked has a lot of features, and um, so we needed to focus on um, the most important ones at first. And for that, we chose our first milestone to be the yas to lan parity, not party, as some people like to read it. Um, but um, yeah, that's because yas to actually has a nice smaller set of um, features, which probably a lot of users will use. And also, it's been the configuration tool of SLES and um, OpenSUSE for a very long time now. So on the left, you can see um, what's currently implemented. On the right, um, what is still missing here. Um, the first two items are in review, so the work is basically done. It just has to be looked at again and then merged. Um, so I think it's coming along quite nicely. It's only a side project for us. Um, so. Whenever we have time, we work on this. Things which actually don't work, or at least would um, require such a large effort that, um, yeah, we decided these are out of scope. One is multipath routing. This is something Wicked natively supports, but Network Manager doesn't. And um, yeah, for Network Manager, you would have to actually write dispatcher scripts. And yeah, dispatcher scripts are mostly custom tailored to systems and modify the system in a way that is pretty intransparent to the user. So it's best avoided, at least for an automatic migration. Then static fallback DNS is something um, NetConfig supports, Network Manager doesn't. 
Um, though there may be a possible workaround here, um, we will have to investigate that a bit further and then decide if it's something we should implement. Um, and then Wicket has these pre, post, up, down scripts and um, yeah, these are also pretty custom tailored to the current system. So migrating these um, would be a large effort, um, though we may look at exceptions to this rule. For example, VPN heavily relies on this. So yeah, on a case-by-case -case basis, we may actually migrate this, but in general, probably not. So with that, we come to a quick demo, a live demo. Um, this is, um, yeah, still work in progress, keep that in mind, um, but this is one path um, how it could work. So we have a VM here set up where you can see currently Wicked is running. We have a pretty complex network set up um, with yeah, a lot of different interface types and um, different configuration. So this is how the migration might look like. Um, let's go through this command quickly, um, dash dash rm, because the container should be removed. Um, we pass in the continue migration um, environment variable, um, because otherwise we would actually abort on warnings and as we will soon see, there are some warnings, but these are safe to ignore in our case. Um, and then we mount the etc sysconfig network directory um, into the container. And the last part is just our registry URL. So let's run it. And as you can see, actually, yeah, a lot of warnings, but all of these are just um, unhandled field warnings. So um, these are some values which are present inside the XML, but not actually read by the migration. So we automatically warn the user in that case. Um, but yeah, um, these are mostly just some default values. Um, Wicked automatically populates, um, so they are safe to ignore. But of course, in the future, we would, um, so hopefully there will be no unhandled field warnings. It's just something we have to also implement. And yeah, as you can see now, we have a bunch of NM connection files um, and we can copy those to the network manager config directory. And now all that's left to do is to disable Wicket and enable network manager. And with that, we are ready to reboot. Shouldn't take too long for the VM to come up again. And yeah. Now, as you can see, there are a bunch of connections. Wi-Fi takes a bit longer to connect. Um, but yeah, all of these are up. The ETH three isn't actually present, that's intended. <laughs> and if we quickly do a comparison, um, for example, on the bond interface, um, we had a um, statically, a static IPv4 address, um, and yeah, it's present in both the before and the after case. Um, we won't go through all of these. Um, you have to, you'll have to trust us that it worked correctly. And with that, we can go back to the slides. And yeah, that's it. Um, here is a link. So the top link is the most important one. It's a um, link to the README. Um, if you want to try it for yourself or look at the code, that's where it's at. And um, yeah, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, go ahead.
also one thing to quickly mention, yes, the URL is kind of cumbersome. Um, it's just in my personal Agama fork, um, but that's because we are actively also developing Agama, and um, for that it's currently pretty necessary to actually have um, access to the whole Agama tree, but in the future this can be separated into its separate project. Okay, great. If there are no questions, it's also um, the right time. So thank you again and 